Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we are going to dive right into example 2 that covers 9.7. We're going to talk about converting polar to rectangular coordinates. So what we've got here in this example is a pair of polar coordinate points. We have the nice R comma theta that you're typically used to seeing and we're asked to convert those. Now in order to make that happen we have a couple really special uh, boxes here that we can think about that will help us make these transitions. And the first uh, set of problems here for example two will only rely on the leftmost box which is how to convert polar to rectangular and that works both with points and equations. So what you see here is that the rectangular coordinates x, y that we're normally used to seeing for a point uh, is, is named by the polar coordinate r theta if we use these following formulas. And it's not probably out of the question that you've seen these before, maybe in your trig class or maybe even at the tail end of your geometry course. So why is it that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta? Well, let's say that we solve for cosine of theta by dividing by r. Makes sense algebraically. Well, then if I take this triangle that I've conveniently located over here and let this angle here be my theta, I know that the cosine ratio says that the adjacent side uh, over the hypotenuse would be my ratio, x over r. Well, if you look at this a little closer, we have actually just bridged the gap to the unit, uh, to the polar coordinate plane. Because if this point right here is going to be our pole, and this is going to be our r, you can almost imagine this concentric circle coming around to the to the polar side and boom that angle right there is going to be our theta and there we are and notice that this point up here would be located in x distance horizontally from our pole which is also our origin in the xy plane so it works pretty well even for the sine the same idea is held you divide by r and the sine of this angle would be the opposite y over the hypotenuse r. So how do you make this work for you? Well you're going to first of all go ahead and set x equal to uh, what we indicated r times the cosine. Well r in this problem is the 2 square root of 3 and we're going to multiply that by the cosine of the angle pi over 6. Now to finish this up, you're just going to have to know some of your trig basic ratios. And I'm not going to go into great detail about how to get those, but if you need to think about that a little bit, you can pause the video. But the cosine of 30 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse would be the square root of 3 over 2. And once you do the simplifying for this particular problem, you end up with a nice 3 for the x. If we do the same thing for y, except use r times the sine of theta, we find ourselves with 2 root 3 times the sine of pi over 6. Again, you'll finish this up by using your handy dandy trigonometry knowledge, and you would hopefully know that the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, which here is going to cause the 2's to cancel, and we would just get the square root of 3. So, the polar coordinate 2 root 3 pi over 6 is the same as the rectangular coordinate 3 square root of 3. Now here in a moment after we do part b I'm going to show you how these two really are one and the same when you locate them on the same coordinate axis. So let's go ahead and look at part b here. Same idea in fact I would really encourage you all to pause the video and work through this problem on your own and then resume the video and check to see if you're right. Did you all do that? <laughs> Let's take a look. So for x is equal to uh, r cosine of theta, we would have 8 times the cosine of 5 pi over 4. This problem is a little tricky because you've got to think about the cosine of pi over 4, the fact that it's located in the third quadrant all students take calculus, right? 
That's what we all hope. All students take calculus in that third quadrant, only tangents positive, which means your cosine's negative, and the reference angle would, of course, be a pi over 4. And we know that that's going to be equivalent to negative either root 2 over 2, or I can say 1 over the square root of 2, like that. And then, depending on what you want to do with this, you could simplify this pretty nicely. I know that negative 8 over square root of 2 is perfectly fine, but if you do multiply by the, uh, by the uh, radical that's in the denominator, you could eventually get this to be written a little bit more succinctly as negative 4 times the square root of 2. We do the same thing for our y value, and you're going to find out that, well, this looks awfully familiar, very familiar in fact. And the reason is because the sine of pi over 4 is the same as the cosine of pi over 4. When you're over there in quadrant 3, both sine and cosine are negative. And so our ordered pair is going to be negative 4 root 2, comma, negative 4 square root 2. Now, I want to show you something really neat with the graphing calculator that will kind of put this into a better perspective. So what I've got right here is a document that I had created on the TI Inspire oh, a few years ago that uh, really allows my students to bridge the gap between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. And for those of you that are familiar with the TI Inspire, all this is really a matter of it is just uh, overlaid on top of an XY coordinate plane, rectangular coordinate plane, and I just put several concentric circles down with some uh, straight lines that had strategic uh, slopes so that they could uh, basically replicate the uh, same kind of um, uh, angle measures that I saw in my co uh, coordinate paper that I use for my students. So what I want to do with this is I'm going to copy and paste this document into uh, our Smart Notebook software so that I can do some sketching with it um, because it's going to be a little bit easier to make this connection with you. Uh, those of you uh, in my class, this is a document that I would certainly want to send to you so that you can use it to help with certain problems. So here we are back to our problem and I'm going to go ahead and superimpose these graphs down below and what I'm going to do is in blue I'm going to try as best I can to locate this polar coordinate point 2 radical 3 comma pi over 6. Well I know that my pi over 6 would take me this far over as an angle measure and I've already taken 2 root 3 with my calculator and I go I got about 3.4 so if you want to verify that with your calculator you can do so so 3 is 1 2 3 and maybe 0.4 about half more uh, of another block would be somewhere around in that vicinity I think it's pretty close I am just estimating it after all well if we were to take a look at our uh, rectangular point which is 3 root 3 I know that root 3 is pretty close to 1.7. So let's see what I've got here. 1, 2, 3, and up 1 and 0.7. I would say that the location of that point is pretty darn close. Do the same thing for our other guy here. So in this case, the polar point, 8, 5 pi over 4. Well, we already talked about how 5 pi over 4 goes all the way around to pi. And then another, basically another up. Uh, pi over 4 uh, would, would put us right at this spoke, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to go out this direction, and I'm going to do so 8. Now that could be a bit of a problem, as you can see. So let's do the best that we can here. I can go out uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, 7 is around here. Okay, maybe 8 could be in this location, but that's okay. I just want to kind of see how close I am. The point negative 4 root 2 and negative 4 root 2, well, if I go ahead and use a calculator to approximate those, I've got about negative 5.6 for each one of those. Well, let's see. If I go out normal rectangular, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and about half more, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and about half more, well, I was close. <laughs> I had to do a pretty good job of trying to approximate that length of 8, but that's probably a little bit closer 
uh, to being 8 anyway. So in any event, I want you to see that the rectangular coordinate points and your polar coordinates are going to find themselves in the same two positions. It's just that they are graphed in a completely different environment. And it's always been like that, even back in your trig class. It's just that it's nice that we have this special paper that has both the rectangular coordinate uh, plane on it and the polar at the same time. We've got several more videos coming up. We want you to stay with us. Thank you for joining.